TLC, what brings you to Belfast? The land of the free. <laughs> um, so, if I'm being brutally honest, you did, Gary. Um, I can't even remember how we met. I think we met through LinkedIn. I think we did. I think I, because I, I had a connection in Ascension, mm -hmm. and then Nico left. Yeah, Nico left. It was through Nico, and then I reached out, and then we had a good chat. Yeah. You were on your phone. Yep, in the park. Call, in the park, yep. in the sun, yep. and I was like, and I was probably in the rain, and I looked, <laughs> and I looked pretty nice. So that, yeah, that was where we first came. It was probably... Correct. So summer. Yeah, summer summertime. Summer, summertime. like mid-summer. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, when I... So I remember seeing um, Ormo Buffs or Obi, um, <laughs> and I was like, what is this thing? What is this thing? And obviously I saw that you were connected there. Um, and so I thought, let me take the first call because my general um, sort of, I guess my view of these things, especially when it comes to founders and what I do, is you should always give someone a shot, right? So I've been very privileged in my life, gone to great schools, um, I've worked in great jobs, um, not from a wealthy family, but I'm from a decent enough family. Mm. So I've, I wouldn't say I haven't had to struggle, but on a relative scale I haven't. So I've been relatively privileged. Now, despite that privilege, because of who my parents are and how we, I grew up, and I'm Nigerian, um, I see challenge all around me. And so I almost like over-index on, you know what? You should always give people the opportunity. Yeah. So I thought, take the first call, which I did. Um, and, you know, it goes without saying, and no, he's not paying me to say this, but no regrets, none. Um, and you pitched to me um, Ormo Baths, uh, Northern Ireland, Belfast, startups, tech, the whole nine. And I remember going back to Ascension and saying, you know what? I've met someone who, irrespective of the company in Northern Ireland, insofar as my sourcing efforts go, I only need to know one person, and that's you, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> that's good, okay. Um, which is amazing. That. I'll take that. Which is amazing. And it's funny, and I, I know I'm probably going down a, a bit of a rabbit's hole here, but um, it's a little bit like when we talk about go-to-market strategies for... Um, founders, mm. you got to think about your distribution point, right? You go to one place and you get access to everything. And that's basically what I uh, found in you. And so to answer the question, um, what am I doing in Belfast? I, I believe in having a more equitable distribution of capital to regions in the UK that are underserved. And because of that, that's why I'm here because I do believe the talent is evenly distributed. And so when you invited me out to Belfast, how could I say no? Good, good. Well, we'll touch on some of the founders that you've met today in a, in a second here. But let's start on Ascension. Tell me about the fund. What do they look for? What's that kind of typical ticket size? Give me a bit of breakdown. Okay, sure. So Ascension's been around, uh, what, nine years now? 2015, I think it is. Um, and it's a very interesting story. So it started off... Um, as being, in a way, a second business of operators. So it's basically run by operators. Um, Jean and Remy both uh, started, um, funnily enough, media businesses way back when. So, I mean, anybody that knows tech will know that, at least in the banking world, and I think legal world, and maybe professional services mm -hmm. as well, it's usually TMT, tech, media, and telecoms, I think it is, or telecoms, media, and technology, something, one or the, one or the other. Okay. And so they started media businesses. They both exited their businesses. And then here we are with Ascension. And so in, in that sense, it's a bit of a different fund, I would say, because it's run by ex-entrepreneurs who kind of understand the journey from zero to exit, right? Um, so it says a lot. Fine, it wasn't pure tech for them, but there are similarities in building a business. Um, so that's kind of like the history of Ascension. We, um, as I said earlier, we are a pre-seed and seed fund based in the UK, backing UK startups only um, at the super early stages of uh, their journey. We write checks of 250 to 300K um, uh, across both rounds. So not together, but in each round. So at, in pre-seed and in seed. In pre-seed, we typically lead or co-lead. And at seed, 
We're often a follower check, meaning we don't lead, but we invest alongside. Um, in terms of the areas that we invest in, we invest across pretty much all verticals. I mean, there are some things we don't do just because we don't understand them. We don't really do hardware, even though we have done hardware in the past. Um, we don't really do cyber because we did cyber in the past. We didn't understand it. And so the investment didn't necessarily go well. Um, but we do commerce. So that's effectively marketplaces, B2B and B2C. Less so on the B2C side, just purely because consumer generally, you got to think about acquisition. How do you hack distribution, et cetera? Um, we do obviously enterprise SaaS, so B2B SaaS. We do fintech, health tech, sustainability, future of work. Um, so multi-category uh, or multi-industry in that regard. Um, what else? We've got two sort of strategies, I would say. We've got a generalist tech fund, and then we've got our impact fund, which is Ascension Fund 3 that um, is currently being raised now. Um, you'll hear some news soon. Watch this space. Um, and uh, yeah, we like, we, we, we like to try and be helpful. I think the fact that you know, our founders have um, quite a number of us, actually, even within the team, have operational experience, I think that helps a lot. Um, I think we're not afraid to be the first check, um, first institutional check in around. In fact, we like it. Um, we like to believe that we're fair. Um, and we are, in a way, we're a sparring partner for founders. Um, and you don't always get that, especially with you know, bigger funds, and I guess at a more mature stage. Um, but yeah, hopefully that gives you some context. Mm. So first time in Belfast, yes. you have been meeting founders all day. Give me a little bit of a uh, flavor of what do you think of our founders? Like, compared to ecosystem, compared to London, what's your thoughts? It's a good question. Be nice. Um, be nice. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So I must admit, um, let's see, who did I meet? Um, okay, I remember them all. There was Salt Road. There was Cap Release. There was Bio. Block Bio. Block Bio. That's what it's called. Uh, I think all, and then there was uh, Stealth, unnamed. Um, I think all of them, actually, all of them are very, very impressive founders. Um, I mean, it's the first meeting, right? But I would take a second meeting. Um, and I think that says a lot mm. because just for context. So last year in Ascension, we saw 3,000 companies or rather 3,000 companies came through the door and we invested in, I want to say between 15 and 20. Wow. So it's a very, very small percentage. Mm. Um, but the conversion rate from that big list to first call to second call is even quite low. Okay. Um, and so the fact that I would take a second call with pretty much every founder that I saw, um, I think says a lot. Um, and two of them, I'm definitely like, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna try and push that ahead for sure. Um, one of them, so out of the four, two of them I'm definitely pushing ahead. One of them I can't because the round's too big for me, unfortunately. Um, and the third one, it's not quite yet time to pull the trigger, but I'm gonna be keeping an eye on that one. Interesting. Good. Okay. So founders, fundraising, all kind of going out to market right now. If you were to give a couple of tips, because we chatted earlier about you love kind of hands-on, helping with the fundraising process. Mm -hmm. If you were to give a couple of founders watching this a few tips for fundraising, because you've seen chaos, we've seen structured, what would be some insights from yourself? Wow. I was not ready for that question. <laughs> But then again, I say I'm always ready for everything, yeah. right? Um, Double-edged sword. Um, what, what, what tips would I say? I'd say leverage your network. Um, and I say, look, everybody says this, right? We like to believe, not just in tech, generally, that we are... Um, we, we, we accept anyone and everyone from everywhere. We have an open-door policy, which is true. However, similar to a job application, when for any one job, there are 200 applications at least. Mm. And by the way, this is just LinkedIn. This is what LinkedIn shows me. 
So if for one job there are 200 applications, how does an HR person or the hiring manager decide who to speak to? Unless they get a signal. Mm. People buy from people they trust. So if you can, leverage your network, as in go on LinkedIn, see who you're connected to in a given fund or that knows someone in a fund, mm. use that person as a gateway to be intro to the fund to at least get the conversation. Mm. I think that's table stakes. Now, some people don't agree with me because they're like, oh, what if people don't have a network? I actually think that because of LinkedIn, almost definitely you will be connected to someone yeah. in a fund if you're in tech. Yeah. I, I want to believe that. Mm. And you can do that through sheer hustling. Mm. So I would say definitely do that. The second thing I would say is, um, the first thing an investor is going to see is your deck. Make the deck as short as possible, but with the key messages that tantalize the investor's um, appetite to want to take the call. Mm. Because the reality, and I'll use myself as an example, pardon me, anyone you introduce me to, Gary, anyone, I will take the call. Even if the deck is rubbish, I will take the call. Because number one, it's out of respect for you. And secondly, there's a bit of a network effect because I trust that you would never recommend someone that you're not happy to put in front of me. But at the same time, the deck shows the level of, um, I, I need to be excited about the company. Um, but interestingly enough, recently, and it's not yet announced, but the fourth deal I'm going to do, or that I'm doing, uh, I was very skeptical about the space. It was a recommendation. Um, I looked at the deck and I thought, yeah, it's busy space. Yeah, I don't really like this. Uh, and I'm doing the deal. Um, Why? Because, first of all, the team is insane. Okay. Second of all, what I thought they were building and what they're actually building mm -hmm. are two different things. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit of a shadow market. Um, and they're basically building a new category. But it's an exciting category. So, yeah, watch this space. Um, so that's two. And then three is be structured and try and drive the process. So be structured, i.e. when you have the conversation, um, if you can, ask what the process is, when to expect feedback at each level of the process, um, ask questions about the fund because the reality is it's a two-way street. As much as, of course, right now, um, demand is outstripping supply, meaning more people need funding than there are people giving the funding, the last thing you want to do is get into bed with the wrong investor. It's, uh, I probably shouldn't say this on air, um, but I will. Um, we live in a world now where getting a divorce, you could do it just like that. You cannot divorce from an investor just like that. So think about who you're getting into bed with um, and then try and drive the process. So if you don't hear from someone, reach out to them, try and push them, get them to make a decision. Even coming to a fast no is, a, is an amazing thing, mm. and you should. Um, so yeah, those would be my three things. I mean, I have a whole laundry list, but you know, you know me, man. We'll be here all night. That's fine. That's good. I like that. Okay, so to round off, what is the best way for a founder, again, if watching this, to reach out to you? What's the best way to get you? It's a good question. In a busy um, world, what's the best way to In a busy world, yeah. find someone that knows me okay. and get them to intro me. Okay, so get intro them to you, speak sorry. to me, basically, yeah, and then I'll exactly. go to you. Okay, exactly, okay, exactly, fair. exactly. You can be my filter. Okay. Fair. And if you send me anything rubbish, then I'll just stop picking your calls. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, well, thank you for coming to visit uh, Belfast. Pleasure. You're welcome anytime in thank the OB, you. but we really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.